All right. So, good evening, everybody. My name is Sham, and just off the fly, I just want to ask you a question. Who here um, had like a really odd sense of fashion while they were growing up? Like you see old pictures of yourself and then you're just like, God, what was I wearing? Like, why were my parents allowing me to wear that? <laughs> okay, cool, so I'm not the only one, great. Uh, here, you see a picture of me, <laughs> that's me. And uh, unlike my friend Ayushi in the, in the foreground who's wearing a pretty dress and smiling, I, I'm wearing a fanny pack. <laughs> That's right, kindergartners, bow down. I was the queen of fashion at that point. Or so I thought. Uh, <laughs> well, to be honest, I thought uh, fanny packs were super resourceful. Like, oh, I wonder where my pencils are. That's right, right here on my waist. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was not what most people thought. And on the scale of all things that are more important, what I thought became very, 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 very small, and what everybody else thought became quite big. But, you know, fanny packs weren't trending then, but guess what's trending right now? That's right. <laughs> fanny packs, guys. Kim Kardashian, Rihanna, Steve Jobs and Helen, everybody is wearing fanny packs, but I'm no longer that somebody who will be influenced by these social norms. I am my own person now, so when I need pencils now, I do what most adults do and steal them from Ikea. <laughs> but fashion, for the most part, is not toxic. Uh, you know what is toxic? Toxins. They're pretty toxic. And I see all of you here not wearing any protective gear, even with corona on the loose. And I'm a little scared because I don't want to die. <laughs> um, yeah, I just really don't. Uh, but, um, you know what, it just occurred to me that, um, like, I think I have something that might be helpful in the case of coronavirus, uh, right here in my fanny pack. <laughs> what? Come on, social norms are, you know, they influence you in some ways, and I have a hand sanitizer here, I know they're really expensive nowadays, so if anybody needs it, it's right here. Um, but, you know, for the most part, that's what I study, how social norms and what we believe actually affect your health outcomes. And it's very, very important right now because we see that more and more how people are behaving around us is, is making our health decisions in a certain way. Like, I wasn't washing my hands before, but now I feel like I should because everybody around me <laughs> is kind of doing that. <laughs> And, uh, you know, this is very important from an economic standpoint because the government can keep telling you to do certain things, but if everybody around you doesn't change in the same way, maybe you won't make those decisions, right? I mean, I remember when, back when, it was cool to eat burgers, but I know that all of you would be lying if you tell me that you stopped because now we just do it in secret, right? Because everybody around us doesn't want to do it anymore. So that's kind of what I'm studying. And what I'm doing is I'm conducting a field experiment in India, in this region, which is uh, marked red. Uh, in this area, the groundwater is naturally poisoned with arsenic. And arsenic is bad because when it enters your body, it causes several problems. Um, here's a very scary picture of what happens uh, when arsenic enters your body. It causes skin problems and it even causes cancer. But the issue with arsenic is you can't really see it or taste it or smell it in your, in your water. So people continue consuming it. Think of arsenic like my stalker Klaus. I can't always see him, but I feel him and I know he's there and it's scary. Klaus, if you're here, everybody knows about you now, so please stop stalking me. So yeah, what I try to do is I go in these villages in this region and I give them an information packet and I try to convince these people to change their behavior towards adopting more healthy health practices. Uh, what I'm essentially doing is making these people more aware about the arsenic problem and seeing if that information becomes trending because they can go and they can talk to their, their neighbors about it and uh, they, maybe they'll change their practices in a way that 
the entire community changes their social norms about these health practices. So what I see is uh, if this information starts trending and does the, sin does the spread of this information actually reduce the health problems that these people go through. Uh, so what I do is I play incentivized games with them and we measure their social norms. We try to see uh, what the social norm is, then we show them a video and uh, we, we go back and then in the, treatment, in the control and treatment group, we see if the treatment group actually differs in their social norms and their health outcomes because of our intervention. Now, you may be wondering why a wannabe economist is talking to you about health and social norms and all of these things. Now, I'll tell you why this is a direct link. It's because uh, healthier people make more uh, decisions for themselves which are more productive. Like, you can only go to work if you're healthy, except right now when you kind of want to make an excuse that you're sick and not go to work. Uh, but this is why it's important because in these regions, the government is actively working on creating information campaigns that can uh, influence people to make healthier decisions. And that's where I come in as a behavior economist to think about what ways it is, what mechanisms it is that actually help you inform these uh, informational campaigns. Like if the government, if, if we know that it's the social norms around us that help us behave in more hygienic ways with the corona outbreak, then the campaign should include that. Heck, if like by the end of my experiment, we find out that all it takes is like Beyonce to tell people that there's water, there's arsenic in this water to, and people should change their behavior, I feel like the government should hire her and make her do that. Uh, but for the time being, we show them our video. Now, the video is a very informative video. It has doctors and people who are suffering through these problems and we go and we tell them about these problems and uh, we try to see how many people understand and how much they actually spread this information in their villages. But I had several amazing ideas about what this information should be that my supervisor outrightly rejected. I really don't understand why, because I think they were brilliant. Um, but because we're here today, I guess, you know, I can tell you what one of those ideas was. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it, here you go. Baby, can't you see there's arsenic? This water pump needs a warning. It's dangerous, you're falling sick. It's cancerous, there's no debate. It's there in what you drank and ate. It's dangerous, you shouldn't wait. Carcinogen in the ground Skin problems all around Do you feel me now? Oh, the arsenic you don't see with your eyes It's toxic, it's slipping underground In your water supply You can smell, you can taste, but you know it's toxic Don't waste time and make haste Don't you know that it's toxic Clean the water In your tank Boil and drink From your river bank Tell the earth To be frank Carcinogen in the ground Skin problems all around Do you feel me now? Oh, the arsenic you don't see with your eyes It's toxic, it's slipping underground In your water supply You can smell, you can taste Thank you guys, that was my time. I hope you have a good evening.